Hey everybody, I hope you're doing good. Welcome to the live stream. Today we're going to got a couple of news articles. First I want to say my name is Brad and I like to do drone stuff and I like to do this live stream every week. And uh, I'd like, uh, thank you for the nice prep screen. Uh, and I'd like to just say hi to everybody. And uh, if you're watching this on the replay, go ahead and leave comments below about the stream that we have. Um, let's get into a little bit of housekeeping right now. And uh, first of all, I've been extremely busy. Uh, yesterday I went out and we did a road trip for my other channel. Got a lot of footage. I didn't even get back until about midnight. So I'm not, not sure if I'm going to be able to get many videos done for Drone Channel this week. But I will schedule to get the, I guess some recorded. I just have to edit them. And because I have work with a client and I'm editing a bunch of his stuff this week. And I have to edit a bunch of my stuff. Um, I'm hoping I can even edit some of my stuff at all. I'm glad Matt and Craig are here. That's awesome to see you. I'm very thrilled that you're both here because you both were chatting up on Google, driving me nuts while I got ready. And I'm sure you guys love doing that. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping to uh, be able to do this kind of stuff. I'm hoping to get some videos done, but I won't. I don't know if I'll be able to get anything done for this week. The other channel, I might be able to get something done this week because my client is really taking up a lot of time right now and he's kind of driving me nuts even though, you know, he helps pay the bills. So that's how it goes. Hey, Stan, hope you're doing well. Um, tonight, just so you guys know, tonight's live stream might be a little bit shorter because I only found two articles that I even really cared about talking about today. And I think you may have, if you look in the links below, uh, you'll see the articles that I'm talking about. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I know that uh, you may not be paying much attention to me. We only have three viewers right now, four viewers now that I can see. Five viewers. Woohoo! Maybe we'll get up to ten today. We'll see. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the videos, all that good stuff. Um, I think that's all I have to say. Basically, I'm really busy. It's driving me nuts. And I may have kind of a big announcement next week it's still too early to say anything right now but something really cool might be happening by the end of this month august to be uh exact so we did we talked about everything did i get everything seven watching now that's great let's get, keep adding more people i'll bet you they're interested in that second story i'm going to be talking about today um yep i got all that stuff in there so today's live stream might be a little short so i got everything in there about housekeeping I hope, oh, you see seven. I see six. I'm glad you guys see seven. Uh, and just remember, at the end of this is when I will probably pay more attention to the chat, although you guys know you tend to distract me a lot during the chat. If there is something you want to say during one of my news stories, you go right ahead and say it, and we will see how it goes. So, first thing I want to talk about, oh, that's right, I want to do this. Um, the first story... And if you look in the description, it's in the order we're going to talk about them. Um, I don't normally talk about military tech and military with drones um, just because I don't want to. I don't really like talking about weaponization of drones. I don't. Uh, this was, But this was kind of an interesting article. It kind of goes along with, uh, not really, but kind of goes along with a little bit of something we talked about last week. And uh, it's basically you know about the drone swarming. And I see someone commented, but I don't see them in here. I can't read this little thing. Oh, there we go. Glad everybody's saying hi to everybody. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about this drone swarming. I hope you like my little stinger. I finally figured out how to do the stinger, which is really, really cool. So this drone swarming with the uh, Marines, what I think is interesting about this, I mean, yeah, this when, I, when I'm reading this, all I'm thinking of is science fiction coming to life. I'm seeing uh, the Matrix style drones. Oh, was that? Oh, did the noise come across too? The noise was not supposed to come across. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see if I can edit that. Properties. Yeah, it's not supposed to. Uh, it's not supposed to come across. Sorry about that, guys. I will have to change that in the next video. It's going to be like that. I'll, I'll stop using it. So, thank you for letting me know. That was my drone flying by on the on the screen. So anyway, back to the drone swarming. This drone swarming really kind of reminds me, I mean, if you guys ever saw the movie Matrix, which I'm assuming most of you have, the um, 
what are they called? The ones that, that hunted everybody down and they ran like swarms. Every time I think of a drone swarm for the military, but that's what I think of. And it's kind of scary because in this article, it says that they've gotten up to uh, six or seven drones for one pilot and their goal is 15. And that's and they can do multiple different types of things because each drone can carry its own mini ordnance, um, which means it can be they saying up to 60 millimeter, uh, uh, 60 millimeter. Um, what's the word? Caliber of uh, caliber of weapons, and uh, that is not something I want to really talk about. But what I'm talking about is the drone, the swarming part, the fact that one person. I will do it again, man. Okay, just for you, Matt. Just for you. Uh, so, Sentinels, thank you very much. I couldn't think of the word. That's what this reminds me of. It's it's kind of neat that you can do this, but I don't like that the Marines are working on this. Um, I don't know if you can read this article. I'm kind of scrolling through it really slow for you. You can check it out. And I, I read it earlier, but I can't read it now because this window is way too small. Maybe I can make it bigger so I can read it. There we go. Round... What's round? Maybe I'm talking wrong. No, mortar. 60 millimeter mortar fire. Yeah, round, whatever. You know what I meant. I just can't think of words today. Um, so they could use it for just about anything. Uh, control swarm of drones. Biggest change for unmanned aircraft. It is, it's better than... Uh, hey, Stella, how are you? It's better than what they're saying. Switchblade. Um, it's allowing... They want to just do all this stuff. And be able to have, you know, each drone would have its own, and here goes the loud noise. Each drone would have its own type of armament, so they could actually do a lot of different things with it. And um, uh, basically, they could actually create a kamikaze drone, too. So, anyway, hey, Stan, how you doing? We got a couple stands in today. Hope uh, other people stick around. Now, I'm curious as what you guys think. Oh, man, my throat's already going bad. I'm curious what you guys think or what your opinions are. Does this, or how do you see this swarming tech? I mean, I can see the swarming kind of technology coming into the commercial or the private sector and doing stuff like, you know, fighting fires, uh, rescue, you know, search and rescue, uh, doing just basic uh, stuff, maybe for the police department, not really, but more and more of uh, observation from a police department and not really using them as weapons because. I'm sure that that would happen too, possibly in the future. Oh, you like the noise, great. Or you like all the armaments, you like the 60 millimeter mortars. Yeah, whatever, man. So, what is what do you see the swarming technology being used other than with uh, with the military? And I hope you don't hear my fan too much. It's a little warm again today, so we are <laughs> being very very careful today. I don't. I don't want to get too hot today. So, what are what are your guys' thoughts, opinions of swarming technology? I mean, obviously, I, I'm not a big fan of it for the military. I understand its need and all of that, but I don't really like the fact that they're. they're I don't know. It, I'm. I'm so torn on it. I really am torn on it because you have to. You kind of have to stay ahead of other people, other countries, so that you don't get invaded or whatever. If that would even happen, you know, maybe we'll get to a better place. This is why I didn't want to go down this road with military, because I can talk bad things. You like the stinger? Cool, thanks. Is it? I hope it's not too loud. Um, sorry, it was. I didn't. It wasn't supposed to be any audio at all, but it did come across. Sorry. Most high tech starts with the military. Stan, you're right. I mean, NASA military. Uh, that's how we got GPS. That's how we got microwaves. That's how we got Tang from NASA. Does Tang still exist? <laughs> Let's talk about Tang and a drone chat. How's that sound? But no, you're right, Stan. I mean, I think it, I just I think you understand my concerns. You know, I'm not really big on on. I, I know we need a military. I have no problems with it. I'm not a big liberal. I'm not a big conservative. 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 I'm in the middle. But I don't know. It's just overkill, but then sometimes you do need to have it to defend your country. So, you know, I don't want to get down. I really don't want to discuss that part of it. I can, I'm the one that keeps pushing myself into it, so that's pretty stupid of me. 
Um, anyway, so tell me, guys, what do you think? What more do you think? Tell me, Stan, what, what uh, or anybody, what do you think that, what are other uses that the swarming technology could be used for? Obviously, you know, one of the things I was thinking of is the, the, the light shows that, like, Intel was doing, like I showed last week. You know, that's kind of cool. Um, and that's a swarm technology, but that's all programmed. And now, you know, one guy is controlling them, but basically he's on the computer saying, okay, land, <laughs> probably, is what I'm assuming. I don't know. I would love to be involved in one of those shows. But with the, I mean, I can see search and rescue. I can see fire, you know, fire suppression. Um, I can see, um, you know, like when, uh, uh, going over when after a uh, devastating storm. You know, you can go through that and, and look for survivors, which is, again, search and rescue. Um, medical supplies being thrown out. I mean, because if you could, I mean, it depends on what you, you know, it, actually, I think the swarms, the, the drones aren't that big, so the payloads can't be that heavy. So I don't know if medical supplies would really work. But if you had, like, a major disaster, wouldn't it be nice to have a swarm of drones to be able to go out immediately and start automatically delivering medical for anything and food to people that might need it. Is the chat broken? <laughs> Nobody's talking. I'm gonna cry. Matt was the last time last person said anything a few minutes ago. And yes, more water. And like I said guys, this this may not be a very long live stream. So you guys might be lucky and go out and do your own thing tonight. I might let you go out and play. <laughs> I appreciate y'all showing up, by the way. I do appreciate it. Nothing? You got nothing? You guys just want me to talk about this next story. I know you do. And this is this next story is kind of a big deal to me. I mean, and to all of us that are flying drones. This is And this came out yesterday uh, on Unmanned Aerial website. Sports and Wildlife Filming, SAR, new, new method of filming 3D films and shooting people. <laughs> What kind of shooting people? Film shooting or other military training, I guess, too. Yeah, it would be actually for military training for maybe target practice. Because if you can hit this little drone, of course, it might be this big. But yeah. What are your thoughts on the Mavic knockoff I see on Facebook? Don't know. I haven't seen it. Haven't looked. Don't care. <laughs> um, not really sure. I'm waiting to see what this new drone that comes out. If the new Mavic. I want to. See, I'm hoping it comes out soon, because I'm actually looking at buying a portable, and I may or may not get the Evo. I don't know. We'll see. The Evo doesn't quite have a good enough camera, but then I don't think the Mavic, the new Mavic, will either. Ah, so let's. I think we. I don't know. We may have talked about it enough. The uh, the swarming. The swarming is interesting. <laughs> You don't. You can. You can keep it subtle, Stella. That's fine. Especially when we're talking this kind of stuff. I understand what you meant. <laughs> but we'll leave it where it's at. And thank you for coming. I know it's kind of late in the UK. So, you guys want to talk about the FAA? Let's talk about the FAA. The FAA. I'm gonna pop this little article over. Be be prepared. No Evo. Yeah, I know, man. So be prepared. You're about to hear a noise. Look at that. I love my little stinger. That's cool. So, the FAA clarifies its federal authority over drone rulemaking. Basically, they say, yes, I know, Matt, but I'm not looking. I'm not. I'm, I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. Basically, the FAA says that nobody, no, loca no local authority in, or state authority can say anything about airspace for drones. They cannot say no flying over this, no flying over that. See you later, Craig. Thanks for joining. Um, you just it, it says that basically they can't decide where you can and cannot fly. Only the FAA can decide where you actually fly. However, this is the big caveat, and this is where they're going to control things. These powers are not the same as the landing sites and the takeoff sites. So you have to have permission to take off from a specific location. For instance, we talked a little bit about, or I talked a little bit about this in my video last week, not the live stream. Uh, I talked a little bit about, you know, 
not being able to take off from a public park because in a, a couple of neighborhoods in this area, or not neighborhoods, but uh, suburbs in my area, they say we don't allow drones in our parks. Well, they're not, they're public, but they're, they're owned by this, the local city. I mean, they're kind of public, but the city makes the rules, so the city is not giving you permission, and you always have to have permission to take off or land. Now, you know, you, you take that as you want. That's, that's how I understand it. That's what I see, and what, this is the way that local, locals and state governments are going to keep you from flying your drones. They're going to say, well, we don't want you to take off from here. Because as you guys know, you can take off from outside of a park and then go fly over the park and there's nothing they can do. That's the way it is. I mean, we've all done it. And that's just the rules. And then if they say now you can't take off from anything public, well then where you can only take off from friends or places that allow you to take off. And that's not so much. You're back for a few more minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Craig. So, basically what it's saying, I mean, I think you guys understand. Here comes a loud noise. Basically, I think you guys are understanding this the same way I am. You can fly anywhere the FAA says you can fly, but landing and taking off is another story. And I actually had a guy ask me, and I don't know, it might have been on a live stream. I had someone ask me, what about if you're standing up and you do a hand launch? What does that count? Where does that count? Well... My thought pattern, and this is what, you know, maybe a police officer or a lawyer might think of, is because you're holding onto the drone, the bottom of the drone is connected to you, and you're connected to the ground, and that ground has to have permission. That's a lawyer. You know, I, I'm sure there's a lot of legal words for all of that, but that's what the law, what the lawyers may argue, and then it's all up to the courts to decide from that point. But as far as where you can fly, like in Chicago, you're not supposed to be flying over municipal buildings, you know, courthouses, uh, graveyards, uh, cemet well, cemeteries are the same as graveyards, I suppose, uh, churches, schools, and all that, but other communities don't care if you go over those. So I can fly over them, but should I? I mean, am I going to get in trouble? I mean, the problem we have in Chicago is not all of the police officers know the actual rules and in most places you know in the city there's some people that they say that you can't they don't think drones are allowed anywhere in the city taking off landing is just that from wherever exactly and, and that's and it's getting a little sticky i think what's we're going to see this over the next few years it's going they're going to iron it out somehow and, and drones are going to be okay but you know here i have a problem you know, I live in an apartment building, and if my landlord says I can't take off, I mean, granted, if I wasn't in O'Hare airspace, but once I get the the ability to get clearance to, you know, through uh, the length system, once I have that ability, my my landlord still has to give me permission to take off, which he probably will. But the biggest problem is there's a lot of trees in the area, and I can see me hitting them. There's it's pretty tight. Hey, Neil, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to be with other people today. But thank you for joining. So my thought is, I, mean, I want to know what you guys think. Um, what do you think is going to happen with this? What do you see with the FAA? You know, because again, the FAA says you can fly anywhere that we say you can fly under 400 feet, which is fine, or 400 feet from the top of a building. Uh, with it, that's within 400 feet of you. you know, so 400 feet is kind of the, the number. Um, can't fly in the, the near the airspace, all that kind of stuff. We got a few res restrictions and whatnot. But what do you guys see happening with this kind of thing? And you haven't had any success with Link. Yeah, I'm wondering how it's going to go for O'Hare. Um, so I'm wondering, what do you guys think? What do you guys think is going to happen with this? With with this kind of rule, or with you know the FAA saying this is the way it is? How much? How many municipalities or state governments are going to say, well, you just can't fly? You can't take off anywhere in our state unless someone else says you can. Hey, man, nice to see you in Mexico. Glad you're here. The whole country of Mexico is here. Woohoo! Nice video, by the way. I think I told you that in your comments. I liked it. Very, very good. Ooh, we hit 10. We hit 10. Woohoo! 
I'm so happy we got to 10, 10 viewers. So odd that we don't, you know, I think it's, I think it's my timing. I might have to move this back. Oh, now we're watching 12. The FAA has to take solid control. There are towns that are trying to say you cannot fly in their town. Exactly. And that's the thing. And that's what I'm saying. But Stan, I mean, you know, that's the thing with, 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 uh, 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 with that, you can take off, can you, can you take off anywhere in their town? That's the thing. They can control it by saying, well, you just can't fly in our public spaces. You can't take off anywhere. You know, because, and, and then you have to go to the city line and take off from over there and then come through and over. And then who's to say the counties aren't going to then say the same thing? Three times we have to drone there. Oh, wow. You were there three times. Wow. Cool. I got to fly yesterday. Twice. Three times. Twice. No, three times. On two batteries. That's pretty good. So happy you got to do that. Um, and Stan's got, you got a great point. You know, the FAA does have to just like put their foot down and say, listen, you little, you little boogers, we can't have all these 15,000 different rules, you know, in every municipality. Just like I said in my video last week, you know, you got to know what the rules are in that local area just before you fly. Because they may be different than the place, the town right next door, which is what we have. You know, Chicago has some rules, and then the the suburbs have other rules. And it's like, why can't we just all get along? And I think I think the FAA really has to put their foot down and say, this is how it is. You can't do anything about it. But then that might say, then the municipality is going to be like, well, we already know how we can stop this. We can just say nobody can take off. Isn't that nuts? I mean, I I just it could become a power struggle. And if the if the municipalities say that you can't take off from a drone anywhere in our city unless you have strict express permission from a property owner, because the city can't say no if the property owner says yes, because it's none of the city's business at that point. So then I would want to buy a couple spots in certain key places in the city. <laughs> and allow people to fly drones and then charge admission which could happen not by me but by other people I mean that's that is a solution to the cities being buttheads is that you just say well you know what <laughs> I own this property here and uh, yeah but then again you also have you have to get permission by the city to actually have that kind of a business and they may just say no Round and round we go. Yeah, me, I, me, what are the rules in Mexico? Are there a lot of rules in Mexico? Are they similar to the U.S.? Are they similar to what? Are they, are they completely different or are they non-existent? I would love to know that, Mr. Mexico. And of course I have to wait for you to respond because there's a very long delay that's the only way I have a really good image and video stream going. Because if I threw this on low latency, the, z the stream just goes to crap. And my CPU is doing really good, man. Hopefully you don't have that problem here. Practically, you can fly wherever you want. I'm moving to Mexico. <laughs> Screw it. I mean, if, if it's... In, you got to be kind. I'm sure to plan. And then, of course, there's that whole thing that I know you guys saw the guy flying really close. We talked about that last week. The same here applies to airports. Five kilometers. Well, that's that's not as far as five miles. It's about, well, it's not quite half distance. It's a little more than half the distance. So three miles, two and a half to three miles. That's, I would be able to fly then. I think I'm, or well, maybe I'm in within three miles. I don't know. That's awesome. So do you have do you have a height restriction in Mexico? Can you only go so many meters? Historical places they don't allow to fly. Well, you know why? That would be crazy. Can you imagine flying over the pyramids of South Mexico City? Oh my God! Those there would be a million drones over there. People would be crashing drones into each other. Oh, that would just be mayhem. So the historical sites probably because there's a lot of people there, and maybe they have something to hide. Let me check. Yeah, I would love to know. I would love to know if you have a height restriction. <laughs> you can only be this tall to ride the, to fly the drones. <laughs> height restriction. <sighs> yeah, I would love to see that. I'd love to know about that. 
So we got 11 people. So anybody else have any input on the FAA saying, you know, hey, this is how it is. You know, locals, state, counties, you can't really say what people can do once they're in the air. And here's my thing. What if you have a drone that does, they, they, and you know DJI and other companies are developing it, that you throw up in the air and that's how it launches. No height, but try try to do not many things. Try not to do many things. You know, that's great. I just hope that people don't go stupid in Mexico and then make it so that Mexico has to crack down on the laws. So I guess I want to come to Mexico and fly because I can just do almost anything I want. Let's all do a meetup in Mexico. <laughs> that could that would actually be fun, wouldn't it? Brad, I'm a little person. You're a little person. <laughs> that means you can't you're not tall enough to fly the drones. Oh no. I'm tall enough. You have to be five foot tall to ride this ride. <laughs> or is it four foot? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are fun. You guys are a lot of fun. I would love to know if you do have anything to say about the FAA thing. Um, or if your country, I don't know, you can, I think most of you guys are here in the U.S. If your country has other rules, I love Mexico. I mean, I think we all should go there. Let's go there and have a flight, a, a, a meetup. Sweet. Oh, yeah, Mexico. I haven't been to Mexico since I was 12 years old. I barely, I remember a few things. I remember the pyramids. Um, I remember crossing over from Texas because we we took we were in a bus. Um, I remember doing some camping, and I don't remember the campground. We couldn't I couldn't remember to save my life. Um, but I remember beautiful. I mean, we were in Mexico City. Uh, you have like a hanging gardens or something. You're four foot six. Oh man, you can barely fly. I don't know. <laughs> We'll let you fly. I'm sure the FAA won't stop you. Heck, I had some, uh, I actually taught some kids how to fly, which was pretty cool. I enjoyed that. They were, I mean, we're talking like young kids. Of course, small drones. <laughs> Not the big white one. That one, no. Ah, okay, so I think we were about done. See, those are the only two stories I have. I try to ask if they don't mind, so I can. Play. Yeah, you know that's. If you ask, usually you get a you get an okay. Like yesterday with our road trip, I wouldn't trust the customs officials with my drone. Well, if you go over to go over into another country, you don't really have a choice. Really, you don't. So if they're not so crowded, okay, cool, man. So if you ask and they say yes, that's not bad. Oh, wow, my chat's a little hanging down a little bit. Might have to fix that. Good, Craig, leave already. Leave, Craig. Aren't you gone yet? <laughs> oh, you have your part 107. Well, then you can fly and you can make money. Two things that are awesome. So I think that's about it for our news. That, see, I told you it's going to be a little short today. It's only we're only at a half an hour. I'm done with my news. But now, the news segment, not really new, but it's kind of the continuing. What's new with the peanut gallery? What's new with you guys right over here? What are you guys up to? What are you guys up to? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. That was kind of rude. Living Mexico's got a new video up, so go check his video out. Watch it about 700 times each. Um, that's about all I know. I mean, uh, Matt's got a new toy. Craig's got a new toy. But you would have to ask them about their new toys. And I don't know if Matt's still here. Um, oh, I was going to say, this I was going to say. I knew there was something I was forgetting, like always. I mean, you guys probably notice I forget to finish my stories half the time. So yesterday when we were out flying the drone, we just asked a couple of places and we showed up and we actually did a feature on them and we didn't even know we were going to do this we're like oh hey let's let's check this place out and we checked it out and they said yeah well and we interviewed one of the owners or the owner's son we flew around their facility on the outside you'll see the videos if you watch that other um, if you watch my other channel you'll see it I'm hoping to have that video done this week <laughs> we'll see 
you have videos on your channel, well then let's check Artco out. we got to go check Artco out. You renew in September, so do I. I renew in October. Um, doing a lot with drone base. You're still getting, see Stan, you're, that's, you must be in a good area for drone base. It may be like you're one of the few people that are, because here, you can't do it. You just can't do enough, like you can't, you can't get on your drone base fast enough to get the job. I mean, too many people are just, I don't know. What is that? That's Thumbtack. I'm sorry, I'm thinking Thumbtack. Drone base. Drone base, I haven't seen anything worthwhile come through, quite honestly. It's only the panos, and I'm like, I'm not doing a panel for 25 bucks. If I'm lucky to get paid. So I'm glad, I'm glad you're doing a lot of work with drone base. What kind of work, Stan, are you getting with drone base? Is it, uh, it's not all panels. I think you're getting like real gigs from what I, what, what I think I've seen. Um, so I would love to hear what you, what kind of, what types of gigs are you getting? Is, are you doing the panels at all? Or are you doing like whatever the heck? I mean, I'm sure that they're contacting you saying, hey, do this, do that. I'd really like to know. And yes, I'm just kind of talking so that you have time to type. <laughs> and if anybody else has any other kind of experiences with the drone base, my experiences have been mediocre at best. So I'm not too thrilled about that. It's just, I don't know, maybe I'm in a rough market. Maybe I need to move to a small town and just go and be the big fish in a small town instead of a small fish in a big town. Maybe I should. What do you guys think? Maybe I'll move to another country and be the only drone pilot in that country. $85 for 16 picks on a property from 100 feet to 350, about 15 minutes. That's a pretty good gig. So is it, that's a real estate gig still. Um, I would, but how much, how long is it going to take you to drive there? That's the big thing, Stan. I mean, I know that you've done this before. You're just, you're not new to this at all. Yeah, drone base is, I think it's nation or worldwide. Um, yeah, I'd like to know, Stan, tell me about how long is the drive? Because if the drive is like two hours, I know that's an exaggeration, it's not worth it. You know, it, it, it takes... Yeah, the 15 minutes, I can see that. I can see less than a battery easily. Do, 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 get a couple different areas. And if it's just pictures, pictures are easier than getting video because you just get the camera in spot, take your picture, and then move to the next. It doesn't have to worry about being herky jerky or smooth. You just do what you gotta do and do it quick. Those are those are really nice. About 25 miles. So you're talking an hour drive round trip. So eighty-five dollars for the hour. Not bad, but I'd like to see it higher. It should be it should be about a hundred and hundred and fifty dollars in that range. My vote. That's my my opinion. Matt, uh, Matt, if you're still here, um, tell them what you charge out in Ohio if you want. I will only go within forty miles. That's good. I think you should charge a little bit more, Stan. I mean, you're you're a good pilot. You've got good video and photo skills. I think you could do. I think you could raise your rates. If, but also, it's drone based, so it's, it is what it is. Oh yeah, that two fifty for Shopco. I forgot about that. Cause that was a while ago. That was a yeah. I actually saw my first Shopco yesterday in Wisconsin. We were in Wisconsin yesterday. Wisconsin. Sorry if anybody's from Wisconsin and was offended by that. I did not mean to offend anybody. <laughs> Getting tired of those kinds of things, seeing all that kind of stuff in the news. I'm offended by this. Ah, boo -boo. <laughs> I guess Matt's gone because he's not commenting. Um, I know Matt charges a, a good rate. Matt, Matt gets a good rate for doing his variable for his uh, real estate listings. Uh, and he does a good job, and nobody complains about his rate, so that's awesome. I think we're going to be uh, wrapping it up, guys, maybe. Yep, yeah, that's what I thought. Drone base says this is how much it is. I think what it is, I think the client says, I'm willing to pay ninety dollars for this, and drone base says, I'll charge, I'll pay him eighty-five and keep the five. You don't need a license to charge. Oh yeah, so anybody can do anything and your rates are dirt cheap. So I'll it's like you find the 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 eighteen year old or the ten year old down the street who has a drone. I'll do it for five pesos. <laughs> and you know, what are you gonna do? 
But it's good to know I can come down to Mexico, get some really good B-roll footage. Maybe that's what you should do is just get really good B-roll footage and go and sell that on Palm 5 or whatever. Black Box. Black Box? Yeah, blackbox.global. Like I said, I have something that I might, I'm working on that I'll, I'll hopefully have more information next week about a something kind of big going on in my life. Hopefully at the end of this month. Let's cross my fingers in a positive fashion. I need a good positive change right now. So did anybody else want to talk about that uh, knockoff Mavic for like 20 bucks or whatever? I know it was cheap. I don't know what it was. What it was. I think it was a scam. I think they said it was a Mavic, but it really wasn't a Mavic. It wasn't, it wasn't even a real drone, or they were just trying to get your money. If anybody knows anything about that. Otherwise, this is about done, because I got nothing more. I got nothing more to talk about. Because we got we got ten people watching. It says for me. We hit we hit over ten. That's all that matters. We hit twelve at one point. Which is better than it's been in uh several weeks. So I used to be getting up to the twenty mark. Gotta get that back up to the twenty mark. Okay, close this window. All right, guys, this seems like uh, we're about done. We're going to cry now. Everybody ready to cry? So I am going to uh, sign off now. We're going to go over to Here Comes the Loud Noise. I'm going to wake everybody up one more time. And here we go. Don't forget, you can find me on my website, brassdrones.com. You can i got to redo the Patreon, but you're welcome to come over and check out the Patreon. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, getting some new Facebook followers. I love that. Um, Twitter, Instagram. I don't post a lot of Instagram, but when I do, it's really, really cool, in my opinion. Of course, if you like this video, please click the like button and share this video amongst all of your friends and uh, subscribe to the channel. And of course, somebody comes in as we are closing up. <laughs> you just got home. So I would like to say thank you to everybody. And until next time, fly safe and a bye.